We hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are created. Are As a member of Congress, I get to have a lot of really interesting people in the office. Experts on what they're talking about. This is the podcast. For insights into the issues. China, bioterrorism, Medicare for all. In-depth discussions. Breaking it down into simple terms. We hold. We hold. We hold these truths. We hold these truths. With Dan Crenshaw. The eagle has landed. Welcome back, everybody. It's tax season. And uh, as that season approaches, we are faced with that perennial question. Why do we subject ourselves to this torture each and every year? Isn't there a better way to raise money for the federal government without these massive compliance costs and inefficiencies? I mean, can you fill out your taxes or do you have to pay somebody to do it? Uh, While the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act that was delivered under the Trump administration, uh, written by my uh, good friend, Congressman Kevin Brady, uh, it was a good success. There was uh, obviously uh, some solid growth, I think, that that came from that, some tax cuts, uh, but it didn't come get even close to where we wanted to be with simplifying our tax code. I mean, truth is, compliance costs still run about $300 billion. Um, our economy doesn't face, it doesn't grow the way we would like it to. And one option to boost our econo- economic competitiveness is to fundamentally overhaul our tax code with something like the fair tax, but it has, of course, become quite controversial. Now, we're a little late to the game. This was controversial a couple of months ago. Uh, but the truth is, I have two uh, great guests that are going to talk about it, and it took a while to get us scheduled. Uh, and what better time to talk about this than in the middle of tax season? So um, speaking in favor of, of a general consumption tax uh, is John Cochran. John Cochran is a senior fellow of the Hoover Institution at Stanford University. He's written books like The Fiscal Theory of the Price Level, uh, Asset Pricing. Uh, he's written on numerous topics on stock and bond markets, exchange rates, options pricing, health insurance, and financial regulations. His blog is The Grumpy Economist at johncochran.blogspot.com. Also co-hosts Goodfellows Podcast uh, with General H.R. McMasters and Niels Ferguson. Uh, he's got a bachelor's degree in physics and a PhD in economics, and uh, this is actually his second time on the podcast. He was back on; he was on in uh, December of 2020 to this, uh, to discuss the economics of inequality. John, thanks for being on. It's a pleasure to be here. All right, you got a, quite the bio, and um, I think this will be an interesting <laughs> conversation, and um, we'll, we'll be good to educate people on, on on why this was controversial in the first place. You know, I'll, I'll just let the audience know now. Like, I'm somewhat neutral. Uh, it's it's really hard to ignore the, the the economic benefits of a straight up consumption tax. It's also hard to ignore the the political difficulties of of what the fair tax represented. That being said, as John, I'm sure will note, there was um, a lot of the criticism was was it was making counter arguments for for arguments that the that the fair tax side wasn't really making. Um, and you know it was it was based on misrepresentation. So I don't know. Let's actually start more basic than that, John. What should be the underwriting philosophy behind a tax code? If we just if we were starting a country from from year one and we needed to write a tax code, how how should we think about it? Given all we've learned over the last few hundred years, I think that's exactly right. <laughs> and it's amazing how, especially in Washington, but academia too. Everybody jumps to answers without saying what the question is. <laughs> and the questions always change. And the answers always seem to be the same, don't they? <laughs> and uh, so uh, I think, number one, I think we should all agree, the point of a tax is to raise the revenue that the government needs for a judicious amount of spending with minimal distortion to the economy. <clears throat> Who could object to that? Now, I think one of the problems we have with our current tax code is that it's trying to do all sorts of other things too. It's also trying to redistribute income and it's also trying to subsidize all sorts of activities where you and me and the other peasants with pitchforks can't see what's going on Mm -hmm. (laughs) with all sorts of tax credits and and so on and so forth. Uh, And it also keeps a a huge business of lawyers, accountants, uh, and uh, people who love to who specialize in structuring corporations to avoid taxes, keeps them busy. So you got a lot of constituents in charge of keeping it away from the goal I set out in the beginning, which is raise revenue for the government without destroying the economy. So the uh, consumption tax, the flat tax, or or the the, um, bear tax, those are all fundamental reforms. Tear down this mess 
is we all got to, this is just an unbelievable mess, and do something that raises revenue for the government with minimal distortion to the economy. Uh, so exactly which form we do, I, I don't think matters, but you know, we're, we're heading towards sort of a crisis and uh, maybe a crisis well, is a terrible well, thing. Well, explain, explain how, economists, <laughs> how economists might define distortion uh, and inefficiencies. How, how, what, what would you call those? Thank you. I'm, I'm guilty of using twenty dollars words when when I shouldn't. Um, <clears throat> one of the, just the basic one is uh, if you pay a lot of taxes on something, then you uh, avoid doing the thing that causes taxes. And uh, what matters, of course, is all taxes put together. So uh, not just federal taxes, federal, state, local income tax, uh, state tax, and so on and so forth. So, you know, for example, we, we say, oh, just tax the rich. Well, you look at actually, if you earn an extra dollar in California, you're lucky if you get to keep 30 cents of it. That's a disincentive towards working, saving, investing, and so forth. Uh, by taxing income, we uh, we make people earn less income. <laughs> There's uh, just less of an incentive to do it. So that's the most easy example. There's all sorts of disincentives riddled through the tax code. Okay, so, you know, I, I think... If, if I'm understanding you right, you're basically saying like, you know, inefficiencies or, or, or problematic taxes would be would be taxes that that provide the wrong incentive structures. You know, I mean, uh, exactly. we, should, we should tax things that we we want to happen less. We shouldn't tax, th tax things that we want to happen more. And from reading your writing, I mean, you're you're, you're against a few taxes in particular. And, and this is probably in line with most conservative economists. Um, the good corporate tax should be zero. Uh, income tax uh, should at least be close to zero or, or well, yeah, I assume that's what you're for because, right, you, you replace it with a consumption tax. I was curious about the corporate tax. You made some good arguments on that, explaining why uh, abolishing the corporate tax and why it should be zero w would probably be more progressive than it would be regressive. And why is that? <laughs> it is now, uh, I do want to put, put some, you know, again, the question is important. Uh, I want to focus on the incentives. And there, there's this net in this debate. Why do people yell so much? Because it's all about Dan should pay more. John should pay less as opposed to let's focus on the incentives for Dan and John to get the work and, mm -hmm. and do things. In the economy. Uh, yeah. So the corporate taxes is one that's full of disincentives. Um, corporations pay no tax. <clears throat> let's just face that. They collect the taxes. Every cent that the corporation uh, pays to the federal government comes from higher prices, lower wages, or lower returns to shareholders. Just take your pick which one it is. Now, right. there's an assumption it's all going to come out of lower returns to shareholders. Good luck with that, because shareholders can go somewhere else, in particular abroad. And yeah. that's really one of the main economic reasons for a low corporate tax, along with a low tax or no tax on, on rates of return. If I invest something, put it in a company... Uh, let's say I make money, I pay taxes, on, I invest it, put it in a company, hire people, make a product and get a return later on. We shouldn't tax that return that comes from later on as opposed to consuming it now. What do you want me to do? Say, say I have a million bucks, go on a round the world private jet tour or invest in a company. You want me to invest in the company. And that's right. why we want to tax consumption, not tax the rate of return on investment. And, and you, you asked for progressivity. Yeah. I think Trump, Trump's taxes that are in the news, or were in the news briefly, turned out till they turned out not to buttress the <laughs> progressive uh, uh, narrative. There uh, is just it's just a Swiss cheese of exclusions and deductions of the rest of it. Get them at the Porsche dealer. <laughs> right. Uh, if you you can't avoid a consumption tax, so if you want to save, invest, leave it in the company, hire people, produce a great product, good for you. When you take it out and go down to the Porsche dealer or the private jet company, now we're going to get you. And that's how a consumption tax that gets the rich people as well as the poor people. Yeah. And this was what was, you know, I don't, I don't know that Republicans made this point very well, but, you know, the, the reason we should be against 87,000 new IRS agents is, is for the simple reason that it, 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 it it's trying to put a Band-Aid on the problem that we created. Well, it's a really, really big, expensive Band-Aid at that. But the, but the Band-Aid would be, your 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 tax your, your your tax system is so complex. It, it takes so much to comply with it. You have to hire so many people to do it. Uh, why not just make it simpler in the first place? 
uh, and, and abolish the need for 87,000 IRS agents or, or an agency altogether. It really begs that question. I mean, Americans would like, I'm sure, to be able to understand how to fill out taxes without hiring somebody uh, every, every year. It's, 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 um, it's costly. Uh, you know, to, depending on how complex your taxes are, it could be thousands of dollars, could be tens of thousands of dollars. I'm sure for most companies, it's tens of millions of dollars. And uh, I think that the total is estimated to be $300 billion. I'm sure we could use that $300 billion for, for quite a few other things. And, and it's worse than that. Uh, fancy people spend, uh, they readjust how they run their businesses uh, in, in order to avoid taxes. And, and I think it really gets to the fairness. You know, when you, you look at Trump's taxes, 400 or so separate uh, independent pass-through LLCs, hmm. a Swiss cheese, credits for low-income housing and all the rest of it, all of it, all of it legal, although pushed uh, right to the end. Average Americans look at this and, you know, the fairness issue of it. Yeah, there, there's a sense in which this is great. Because in part, we we pretend to tax at a high rate, and then there's this Swiss cheese, the special credits and deductions, so we, we don't actually collect it. And I want to go back to the uh, the distribution thing, because, again, we, we need to stop focusing on the federal income tax alone and, and how redistributive is it. Taxes, all taxes matter. The total amount I pay between what I earn and what I get to consume, state, local sales tax, that matters for incentives. And the whole transfer system matters. The taxes themselves don't have to be progressive if you use the money to just write checks to people. And as an economist, it's hard, you know, there's incentives there, but if you just want the incentives, take the taxes that come in. If you don't think it's progressive enough, use those taxes, write checks to whoever you want on budget, allocated, you know, voted every year. Uh, that's how a democracy works. You don't have to have the tax system be the one that does the redistribution. You, the people's representatives, go write checks to whoever you think needs re redistribution if you want redistribution. That's just much more efficient than trying to do it through the tax code. Do we, um, there's not a whole lot of data collected on this on an annual basis, but there was one OECD report that suggested that the United States had the most progressive tax system in the world, uh, which just blows the mind of liberal economists and, and Democrats. Do you think that's still the case? It's absolutely the case. And the reason is, this is something we're going to have to face. Um, it's not that... Uh, taxes on high income people are that much lower elsewhere in the world. Though a lot of the rest of the world taxes capital income less than we do. They've, they've figured out that that's a growth destroying tax. They tax regular income as, as high as we do. The rest of the world taxes middle-class incomes. Europe has a middle-class welfare state and they pay for it with middle-class taxes. And that's why it's less progressive. Everybody right. pays real taxes in Europe. Yeah, and you know, but they also pay a VAT tax. And so this gets to your, your, your point on a consumption tax, but it also kind of gets to the point that the, 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 the uh, critics of a fair tax have, which is that it's more of a political uh, criticism than it is an economic criticism. But their point is you're just going to pile these taxes on top of each other. It's going to be just like Europe, but we have high income taxes and a high consumption tax and we're all going to lose. Yeah, that, that is. And now um, I should defer all political questions to you, but <laughs> let's just for our listeners, the proposal of the fair tax was, We'll put in a, a national sales tax, and we could use a VAT, we could use a sales tax. So I don't want to argue or a consumption tax. We don't have to argue about which form of that is uh, with a little bit of progressivity in it, and it will fund whatever other progressivity we want. And we will get rid of the income tax, the estate tax, the corporate tax, everything else. Yeah. Now, then there's the trust. Can, there's the, can, we, can we hold them to the deal? Because what Europe has is, of course, all of the above. Um, if, you, if you're listening to these swan songs about Europe, the average European pays about a 20 percent sales tax. That's the VAT on everything, 20 to 25 percent. Uh, your payroll taxes, Social Security, Medicare taxes can be as high as 40 percent and a 50 percent income tax. You know, they kind of get pocket change to go home with at the end of all this. This is what, uh, you know, a solvent welfare state costs you. Uh, so the, the danger is, are we going to really just uh, get now? Now, I'm I'm I don't like that argument uh, yeah. because it says America must always tie herself to a horrendous, unfair, inefficient, uh, uh, terrible, outdated. It was invented in 1913 income tax system, merely because we can't trust ourselves that we won't yeah. keep this thing when we add 
uh, something new and better at the same time. So I have more faith in you and your fellow legislators and the ability to strike a deal and actually reform this country. That that seems like horrible cynicism to say we must tie ourselves to something terrible because we don't trust uh, we don't trust the bargain to come out. And similarly, some of my fellow economists say, no, you got to keep the income tax and not the, the VAT or this flat, uh, this uh, sales tax, the fair tax, because those are so good at raising revenue that we have to constrain the government to only raise what it can raise by income tax. Well, government seem, doesn't seem restrained in its spending mm. by lack of tax revenue lately. So I don't like that argument. Either. Let's let's yeah, fix this. I, darn I, I, I actually agree that because I, we hear it all the time in conservative circles, you, you got to the only way to shrink government is to is to choke it off, the, choke off the financing of it. And I think that misrepresents what the what the true philosophy of conservatism is with respect to the size of government. When we say size of government, like I've never meant it literally. I don't mean like the size of their buildings or even the size of their budget. What I mean is the size of their power. That's what you should mean. And their power is governed by laws and regulations. That's what we have to target shrinking. Because obviously we want to spend more money on certain things and we're a growing country, we're growing influence, we're growing complexities. It's not crazy to to want to raise revenue. What is crazy is to want to increase the reach and power of government. That's what we're trying to shrink. And that's what I try to remind all conservatives uh, and, and anytime I can. I actually just want to repeat your point about corporate tax because I, again, I hadn't heard that, that the way it described before. I've always um, instinctively um, been at your position, but I love, but I, I want to repeat for the listeners how important that argument is. So, as you said, corporate taxes, you, you, they're never paid by the CEO. They're never paid by the corporation. It's, it's a, it's a non personifiable thing. So it's either paid by lower wages. Um, it's and it's 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 easier to decrease wages. Ten, it, it tends to be easier to decrease wages on your lower income workers simply because they're less competitive. And would I be crazy to say that? Um, they're going to get it from raising prices on consumers. That's usually fairly easy to do. Or um, they're going to screw over their shareholders, which they'll never do. Uh, so which do you think it is? Well, and I thought that was such a great point. Well, and also it's not a matter of, of will. <laughs> you know, if they could screw over the shareholders, they would have already done it. <laughs> it's yeah, it's a matter true. of uh, right. it's true. who can avoid it. And uh, right, it's if everybody has to pay a corporate tax, we can all raise prices because I know the competitor has to raise prices too. We can all lower wages because I know the competitor has to lower wages too. Uh, shareholders can run. They can offer you a lower price for your, if they know there's going to be a corporate tax coming out of the dividend, they're not going to give you as much money for the shares. It's it's very hard to keep shareholders and bondholders. You can't screw them because if you don't pay the bonds, you go, you go under. So capital markets, it's just easier for them to avoid being taxed than, than you and me. Okay. So let's, if we can dive into the actual specifics of this specific bill, and I wanted to avoid that to an extent, but it's still good for the audience to know. Um, what I really wanted to do, but we've we've kind of done it already, was this broader conversation about the, the uh, about the principles of a flat tax or a consumption tax. Why an income tax isn't a good idea. Again, if you're just starting a country from scratch, why a corporate tax isn't a good idea if you're just starting a country from scratch. Why a capital gains tax isn't a good idea if you're just starting from scratch. But this particular bill, well, effectively does all of that, and then it settles on a couple um, things, right? A thirty percent consumption tax rate. What I'm curious. Uh, how we, I, I haven't asked Buddy, and Buddy's a, a friend of mine. Buddy Carter is the one who introduced this bill. He's a friend of mine. I didn't ask him about this specific bill and how they came up with 30%. Maybe you know, uh, why not 35? Why not 25? I'm just, from my own curiosity. Um, and then some of the some of the most potent criticisms are 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 how that redistribution would actually work. Because like you said, there's, there's some people who they, they claim will be hurt by this, right? Your lower income folks and your senior citizens, and and I, I think part of the idea would be these redistributions, uh, the, these checks that come out, uh, I guess, on a monthly basis. But but I guess the criticism is that that becomes just a, another entitlement program, another universal basic income uh, type of proposal. So so I guess two questions, maybe explain that redistribution part, either in theory or or as it pertains exactly to the legislation. I don't really care. I just think it's an interesting conversation. And also, how, how do we even come up with 30 percent? Okay, so I'll answer the first, the last question first because it's the easiest. Um, basically, the tax rate is going to have to be set to pay whatever the government wants to spend. <laughs> and if the government wants to spend 50% of GDP like they do in Europe, eventually that rate's 
going to have to go up into the 50 range because if that's what you spend, that's what the rate's going to have to be. And if you spend a whole lot less, the rate's going to have to be a whole lot less. So I wouldn't focus on, on the headline rate because, uh, you know, if you guys say 30% and then you spend a whole lot of money, well, the debt's going to go up and you're going to have to raise that rate. Uh, so the rate is really over the long run set by how much uh, spending is going to be. The rate is shockingly high. <laughs> well, that's because spending is shockingly high. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you uh, state and local were spending in the mid 40% of GDP, that, you know, the tax, you're going to have to, the average tax rate is therefore eventually 40% or so of GDP and 50 in, in Europe. Yeah. Uh, and I, this is what I love about the consumption. People say that rate's too high. How can you have such a high rate? No, you're paying that rate now. <laughs> You're just spreading it out over federal, state, local, corporate, estate, and all this other stuff so you don't notice it. But I think it's lovely to have it all in one place. And then the average American voter can be shocked to say, what, I'm giving away half of my money to taxes? Yeah. And if you don't like that, you know, tell your representative to spend less. Um, so that, that high rate, anyway, the two points, one, the rate is whatever spending is. And I think the high rate is an advantage because it it lets voters see what's going on by having it all in one place. Yeah. Um, did you want to still talk about the UBI and the making? Yeah, Sorry, yeah, yeah. How, how would that work? Um, uh, the the yeah, current proposal, that. everybody gets a check. So the, the fact is of a national sales tax is that everybody is going to pay um, 20 or 30%, depending on how you calculate it more on, on the stuff they buy. So, uh, you know, that that does hurt everybody um, and it hurts people, uh, um, lower income people now. It also, one of the big complaints is it hurts uh, retirees who paid their income taxes, then they retire and, and then they got to pay more for the stuff that they consume. Um, now, uh, again, I, I, I think we ought to, I'm, I'm a little worried about already throwing redistribution in the tax code. Uh, why don't we have the tax code re uh, raise money for the government and then write people checks if you think they're deserving uh, rather than put that mm -hmm. in the tax code. Now here, you know, you got to use politics as sausage and, and you're in charge of slicing up the sausage and, and getting it through. But as a matter of principle, I, I think we should not go too far down this line. The, the point of any huge tax reform is look, you're going to give up your special thing. You're going to give up your special thing. You're going to give up your special thing. But we're going to have very low rates, a very broad base. The economy is going to go like hazy. We're all, all going to get better in the end. So the more people you start saying, okay, here's something special for you to make you whole, the more the whole thing falls apart. Uh, so yes, uh, I've, my proposals for a, 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 a VAT or so forth have include progressivity so that it exempts people of lower incomes. Uh, you want to do that? You want to watch out. Right now, our social programs, if you earn an extra dollar, you lose a dollar worth of benefits. The highest tax people in, in the country are the people who face the tax rates of social programs. So, you know, you don't want you don't want to give huge incentives to people not to work. Uh, and, you, you know, uh, you want to think about retirees. Are they really or, or really not uh, coming out pretty well? You know, Social Security did pretty well by them. Uh, but let's not get too deep into the weeds, I would advise. Uh, on on trying to make every single tiny category come out just as well or better, as opposed to look, this is going to just be great for the country. Uh, let's all yeah. get in this together. Well, it's exactly why the politics are so difficult because the, the politics require the Congress to get into every detail and every constituency that comes out, and th those are two main ones, right? And and I guess uh, what one proposal I don't know if the bill does did this, uh, but one question would be if the since Social Security benefits kind of increase with uh, inflation under a CPI index, would the consumption tax basically be added as part of that calculation, therefore increasing their their monthly benefits as it is? Um, I don't know if that's in the bill or not, but it, it, it's one idea I think you, either you've written about or, or others have written uh, about as a possibility. I read the bill. It's not there. And of course, I, I would encourage you that the job of, of whoever's in charge of this is to take everybody who's complaining and say, good, you're going to be hurt. Now, make sure, be, come with me and make sure that everybody else who's winding for a special handout, they they, they don't get theirs back either. Uh, you can turn everyone into allies, maybe. Uh, but yeah, uh, but it's it's a fine point. So retirees, are they really going to be made uh, much worth, uh, worse off by this? Yes, they'll have to pay more. Um, Social Security, on the other hand, uh, you know, let's think, is this on the transfers between young people and old people? Are old people really getting shafted as we go in here? Mm. Social Security yeah. benefits went up 
went up a whole lot. Young people are going to pay a lot of Social Security taxes to pay Social Security benefits. They're nicely indexed. Social Security benefits are indexed for inflation a lot more than my salary and your salary. <laughs> so they're doing okay there. Yeah. Uh, and well, um, I agree with you on that. Don't, 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 don't get me started on how on deeply, deeply unfair uh, Social Security is and how it screws my generation. Yeah. Uh, if you want to hear me start ranting, we can go there. Uh, but it's, it's a, a different subject. Yeah, they're gonna, the rich ones who are complaining about, oh, I, you know, my my uh, my savings are now worth less because I just spends up. Wait a minute, you don't have to pay estate taxes anymore you know, either. So they, you know, and your the stocks and bonds are going to just boom when this happens. So it's not so obvious that old people are are hurt. Again, don't focus too narrowly on on what the consumption tax does. Let's think overall uh, as we switch to this, are 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 old people really hurt? Not so right. obvious. So, and back to the lower income folks. I mean, so uh, let me let me lay out the the other side's argument on that. You know, if it's thirty percent uh, consumption tax rate, you know, they weren't paying thirty percent before. Uh, like like you said, most middle income, or most middle class, upper middle class people are definitely paying at least thirty percent taxes when it's all said and done. Lower income or not, um, they uh, are usually wow. playing, uh, paying effectively zero, and so this would this would increase costs, and hence why the the what would be eventually a UBI distribution? I mean, would that be easy to do? Would that be easy to do fairly? And I and one of the one of the criticisms maybe you can respond to from from Grover, which I know he'll make because I've read it, is that um, that the, the legislation does that but doesn't put any work incentives on there. Uh, and is that something? Would you agree with with that criticism? Well, a, a true UBI, everybody gets ten thousand bucks, including you and me. Mm -hmm. There's no work incentive to that because it's just the 10,000 bucks. Now, usually these are means tested. So as you start earning money, we start giving you less money and that's where you get the worst work disincentives. But I, I so again, I think it's a mistake to just focus in on this one thing. We have a huge social safety net. So people, low, people with low incomes, uh, I, feel like, I think half the country is getting food stamps right now. Food stamps yeah. phase out with income. Um, uh, um, Social Security is taxed, so that phases out with income. The earned income tax credit phases out with income. Housing vouchers, you know, earn too much money, you lose your house. Medicaid, earn too much money, you lose your health insurance. Obamacare, earn too much money, you lose your health insurance. So there's this, uh, first of all, we are already transferring an enormous amount of money in kind and in money to people mm -hmm. with low incomes. Um, good or bad, I don't want, you know, just... Don't forget that's already happening. Yeah. Uh, and I would now there's been a similar talk about let's have UBI instead of all that. That one I, I don't think works uh, in part because we're, we're not going to uh, we're, we can't afford it. And, and we're we are going to keep giving people um, targeted benefits. Um, but I, I would just say instead of trying to fold UBI and transfers into this tax code, why don't we look holistically at the entire uh, social uh, safety net, uh, cash transfers, which could be to everybody or or just, uh, you know, based on income and so forth. Let's look at the disincentives of the entire system put together uh, and 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 think about that as opposed to, you know, focus on this $10,000 UBI as if there was nothing else going on. Yeah. And, and again, we're, we're, we're sort of talking about the legislation. I don't remember exactly what's in the legislation. It's never coming up for a vote. It's never come up in my committee. So I've, I've never really studied it for good reason. Um, I don't know how much how much you have either. So I don't even remember what was proposed in this specific fair tax bill. Do you? As I remember, uh, everybody gets a ten thousand dollar check. Everybody. Uh, but okay. I mean, well, to, to yeah, handle to the UBI. disincentive now at, at, at huge cost. You know, every time you do that, the rate on everything else goes up. This the principle of of good taxation is low rate, broad base. So every, yeah. and that's a danger. Going to start, please, in Congress. Don't carve out food. Don't carve out medicines. Don't try to carve out things that poor people buy as a ham-handed way of transferring income. Because every yeah. time you carve something out of the tax, you got to raise the rate on everything else. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. I, I, I certainly uh, tend to agree with that. Um, but that actually got my mind thinking about something else, which is uh, like the luxury tax. So if so if you went to a, a, a if you wanted to keep the tax code still highly progressive the way it is. Um, but you wanted it to be a consumption tax. Is 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 there an efficient means to tax uh, luxury items or or increase the consumption tax for purchases over a million dollars? Because obviously poor people aren't doing that. And also, is there an efficient way to say, look, food isn't going to have that consumption tax? 
Like when you go to Kroger's, it's just that consumption tax doesn't exist. Is that, would, 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 there, would there be an efficient way to do that? Well, I, I think it's a bad idea to start going down that path in the first place because rich people eat food too. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, we, we do have, a, we, we're already doing that. It's called the food stamp program. It's called SNAP. And if you do it right, it has it has work incentives to offset the income problems. Uh, you know, gets the if you do it right, gets the kind of if, thing. But, but that's a big if. <laughs> that's a big if. It's a big if. But you know, simply exempting all food means you're exempting caviar and champagne at the same time. So I think that's just a, that's where the Swiss cheese starts to creep back in again, and and fight the Swiss cheese as much as you can. Do your redistribution with your redistribution. Do your taxing as efficiently as possible. And then also, you know, quickly we start into a you're going to see tons of lobbyists. No, my, you know, fishing boats aren't really a luxury tax because poor people fish. You know, you only want uh, yachts that have swimming pools on them to be luxury tax. <laughs> really want to deal with all these people, <laughs> right? And, and, the, and the, yeah, it's true. And then you start getting into the into the, the same exact complexities that we have now, trying to categorize certain goods as this or that or uh eligible for deductible or credits or whatever or in this case a, an exemption whatever you call it so i could see that but i mean i just wonder if i still wonder though if broadly you know the food cat yes rich people still eat food um but they but they can't consume more food per person than everyone else you know for the most part right and so what they can consume more than everyone else is boats and yachts and, and expensive purchase items maybe it's above a certain purchase item i'm just thinking outside the box here as a as as both sides of this debate, I'm thinking, how do you, how, how would you bring people together? Because I think about it politically too. How would you bring people together um, to to get the most economically efficient taxation system, but within a within a political reality? And so that's why I ask these questions. Not not I understand that there's like a purist view on the economic economic side, uh, but there's also there's got to be some realism associated with it. It also distorts, you know, do you, so you put in a boat tax. Well, then rich people say, I guess I won't I won't have boats, but I'll uh, spend my money on private jets. OK, we'll have a private jet tax. OK, I won't spend my money buying one. What we'll do is I'll, I'll just use, uh, you know, some net share arrangement to uh, to rent the boat or the, you know, we'll set up an LLC that will rent out boats. And now, OK, now we got to make boat rental into a luxury thing. You can see where this whole thing falls apart. Sure. <laughs> go, go, going back to just the basic debate between income tax and consumption tax. So what's the best argument you hear from more liberal economists? Because uh, I, I I can't imagine there's many that that want a consumption tax versus an income tax. I'm sure they argue, correct me if I'm wrong, but I assume more, your more liberal economists will argue for an income tax. That's the kind of taxation they like. They like it to be progressive, et cetera. Um, you argue that a basic economics 101 shows that um, shows the inefficiencies inefficiencies here. It, it it shows how it distorts proper incentives. Um, I, I suppose those incentives would include the desire to work. If you're if you're taxing labor, then why would you why would you want more labor? And, and both the court, both the employer and the employee are paying that tax. And of course, it's a disincentive to hire more and produce more growth, right? I assume that's correct me if I'm getting your argument kind of wrong. Your argument obviously makes more sense to me. What's the best argument from the other side? I, I want to first add to the argument while I think about trying to find a, a relatively coherent one from the other side. <laughs> uh, you know, because income doesn't really matter. If, if The difference between income and consumption is, is what you save or invest. So if you have a lot of income and you use it to build a factory and employ people, why do we care about that? What we care about is, is your consumption. And really income, why do we have an income tax at all? It's a fairly meaningless economic uh, e economic thing. You have high income in your middle years and, and low income when you're young. And, and, and you know, kids count as low income because they're just starting their work. But, you know, my kids are going to be OK. Old people count as low income because they have lots of saved assets. But, uh, you know, what counts is, is your consumption level over your life. And if, you know, if you choose to live like the head of Ikea, who apparently drives some ancient Volvo and lives in a in a in, in an apartment in, in Sweden, well, who cares? You know, your your money is just sitting there being productive to your fellow citizens. Why do we have an income tax? Because in 1913, we didn't have the technical capacity to have a consumption tax. The government could measure income. It's the only reason we get it. It's like, why in the 1400s did the, did the UK have a window tax? Because they could measure your windows, not because they thought it was a particularly good idea. So income just doesn't make any sense. What makes sense is 
how much of the world's resources are you consuming? Well, that, yeah, that I'm just on fairness grounds. Yeah. Uh, you want to get people's consumption and not if they leave it invested in a business, great with them. That, particularly the wealth tax idea. If I leave my money invested in a business, hiring other people, producing products, goodness gracious, why do you want to stop from doing that? Uh, yeah. You know, you want to stop buying the boat and going on the around the world jet uh, jet tour. Uh, I'm, I'm still in the back of my mind trying to find up with a decent argument for the income tax. I think it is uh, on um, redistribution grounds. So yeah. it's not. I was going to say it's they they make they make they make it purely based off of an inequality argument. Um, and it because now of course why do we care about? I don't like to use. Uh, I'll give you a new word. Let's call it income income disparity. Yeah. Why do we care about income disparity? Well, I don't know. And, and you push push push. The only the only theory that I've heard that makes sense of what they're doing is they think that people with high income and high wealth have too much political power. They're not noticing that all the people with high income and high wealth are progressives giving to their side of things, but don't, they think yeah. that they want to, they want, and this is quite clear. Uh, um, uh, Zayas and Suckman who wrote a very honest op-ed about this. Nah, it's not really about income inequality. It's not really about economic efficiency. We want to take money away from people with high incomes and lots of wealth because we think they have too much political power, which means we want to grab that political power for the federal government and whatever party can grab the federal government. I think that's the most honest argument. And uh, I want you, you said something very wise. It's about not about limiting the government. It's about limiting its power. Well, it's about aggrandizing the power of the federal government. Yeah, no, I can definitely see that. I mean, they, they have a kind of a pathological obsession with, with inequality. And I, I've said what you just said before. I've said, I don't actually care about inequality. I care about what the bottom is doing. I care yes. about how well they're doing, you know, and now, now, politically speaking, the inequality argument makes more sense just because it, it can create a sense of resentment. And that resentment does lead to calls for socialism and Marxism, which just destroys a country. So from a political perspective, I guess there, there, there certainly is some reason to be weary of too much inequality. And I do admit and, 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 and counter me on this, but let's let's let me, let me say their argument. So you, you go to this basic consumption tax. Uh, you get rid of taxes on the estate, you get rid of taxes on on investments, right? All the ways and wealth tax, all of that, all the ways that rich people continue to build their to, to build their wealth. And so they do they do begin to build their wealth in this kind of situation at, a, at an exponential rate. Um, now, I would also argue, and you would argue as well, I'm sure that the lower income will also build wealth faster than they otherwise would have. But the speed is still different. And so it's still, you know, if, if you're watching on YouTube, my, my hands are going, it's just, it's going like this faster. And that just drives people crazy. It doesn't matter that it's not rational. It should, it should not rationally drive them crazy, but it does. Um, but, it, but what would your counter to that be? Would, would that be incorrect? You think? Uh, so number one, I want to echo what you said, what matters, what ought to matter to all of us is opportunity. Is, and, and there's a lot of lack of opportunity of, of people in, in lower income uh, America right now, uh, you know, and, and so why, why would you want teachers unions if you think if you worry about the plight of people stuck in bad places in America, giving them awful educations, we want prosperity. And we want opportunity, and we want that widely distributed uh, down to the bottom as well. We do not want the vision of um, we're going to have big wealth taxes and and we'll give you a monthly check that you can use to to live in a trailer somewhere without having to work and and enjoy your opioids. That's a horrible vision for America. Uh, we want a society with lots of opportunity for for advancement uh, of everybody. Yeah. I don't buy the political argument that inequality per se, oh, I used it. I didn't mean to use it. That income diversity <laughs> breeds diversity. resentment. If people in our, our we're still an opportunity society, if it's perceived that that money has come to you fairly, if Steve Jobs creates an iPhone, a wonderful device, makes billions and billions of dollars of benefit to all of us, and he gets one billion of it, good for him. I, you know, most of our money is self-made by people who brought us great new products, great, great new companies. I don't think America cares about income diversity if we feel it's fairly earned. 
Now, if we feel that the route to getting lots of money is to run to Washington and get a bailout, uh, I think there's that. That's something that, or, or to uh, to have a tax code with 437 separate LLC kind of pass through companies to avoid uh, avoid taxes. I think that the unfairness, inequality, in, in income diversity that comes via unfairness uh, and, and a crony system, that's something that breeds a lot of resentment. We ought to worry about. But if it's if it's fair, if it's productive. You see people who come, have a great idea, make an honest buck and get ahead. I, I think that's uh, that that is politically uh, wonderful for the country and, and attracts people to it and inspires people to opportunity. Yeah, I agree. I'm not sure why. And maybe because we disagree internally on the Republican Party. So it's hard for us to, to come out with a, with a single message. Um, we're at a disadvantage with with how the media portrays a lot of these proposals as well. Uh, you know, it's 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 fairly obvious that the Democrats pounced on this particular proposal and never mentioned that all your other taxes would go away. You know, they don't <laughs> they never, never mentioned that part. They just said you're going to add 30 percent. It's like, come on, guys. And, you know, the same thing about Social Security reform. Hell, we're not even talking about Social Security reform and we should be, but we're not even talking about it. And the Democrats still come out and 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 provide the public with our arguments that we've never made. Um, it's it, it's quite infuriating, and you know whether it's taxation or or welfare reform or entitlement reform, there's got to be an adult conversation at some point, and that explains in 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 truthful terms to the American people what these trade offs are, and they are trade offs. That's all they are. They're just trade offs. Um, like I said, if you want me to be going on a rant, uh, talk to me about Social Security and how un unfair the Democrats' proposals are to that. They want to tax me, people my age. Um, rant away. Yeah, was right, go, go ahead. And, I was just encouraging you and directly transfer it to, to older people who've had their entire lives to save. And, um, you know, I, I won't go too far to rant on that just because I, I do talk about it a lot on this podcast. and My audience is, is accustomed to it by now um, and, and, and know the arguments, but it's, I, it's frustrating. Just to get you going, I mean, what what is getting to happening? Social Security was sold as you put it in, you get out what you put in, and it is going to become a pure transfer program. Um, you know, raise raise the limits on Social Security taxes, and so it's simply uh, a transfer program. And yes, it is a generational tax uh, transfer program. You are going to pay a whole lot of money, so grandma and grandpa who uh, can can earn a lovely retirement, and then they can sell you their house for about three million bucks. <laughs> Oh yeah, because they want that they want that estate tax too. So you can't even see. So yeah, that's another ad. This is another ad. Just like you know, knife in the back. There is, is the Democrats also want to add that wealth tax, which would make it impossible for us, my generation, to even get the wealth from my older generation. Oh, that's just great. Why'd you even bring that up? <laughs> just <thanks. laughs> to get you going. Yeah, thanks a lot. Can, can you sell these on the? You know, we're gonna lo lower your social security tax bill. Oh, incidentally, by the way, we're gonna have to reform the benefit side of things. You know, lower your income tax bill. Oh, by the way, we're gonna do it with a consumption tax. I don't know. Uh, it is amazing that the the plus side, the benefit side, never gets talked about. And this is not a fixed pie. By reducing the inefficiencies and the distortions, you know, the whole point is you get a whole much more. Uh, a, a much more dynamic economy out of it. Yeah, it, it, it's frustrating. I'm sure. I'm sure you were around and following closely uh, in the early 2000s. Uh, Bush's proposal um, to 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 move us towards a personal retirement account form of Social Security. From what I understand, I mean that's mathematically impossible at this point because we're too far down the road. But I mean, would you agree if we if we'd gone down that path at that time, you know, we we would be in a much better place now and. Absolutely. Although you, you got to like what's happening in Chile right now, they did that. And then they voted in a new government who said, oh, we're going to grab all that stuff. <laughs> so oh. it has <laughs> Okay. So as long as it's not stolen, it's uh, we're okay. Yeah. 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 But yes, yeah. certainly uh, moving towards that system would have helped a lot. And, and, you know, the sooner we fix it, the more time there is uh, to, to, Move to a system that helps people who really need help without um, uh, so taxing and, and regulating the rest of the economy that it falls apart. Is is there a way, since we're on the subject, and I'll, I'll, I'll end with this as we, we, we got to move on soon, but is what do you think, uh, let's say from the economic perspective, what the best compromise would be? Um, if, 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 if obviously the, the, the factors in the equation are benefits and taxes, we're just, we're just talking entitlements here. What would the best compromise be? Um, because in my head, I'm trying to think, what would they go for? 
Um, if, if, if Republicans are willing to raise the retirement age on people like me, and it's not Republicans, that's what my generation should be willing to do. Let's not say this is left versus right. Let's say this is, je- this is older versus younger, because that's what it is. And so each generation has to give something. Um, the younger generation doesn't want to be taxed more, but we're also living a lot longer. Maybe we should retire later. Okay. Um, older folks, uh, they're, they're reaping a ton of the benefits from living longer. Uh, they're, they're, the inflationary index has, has raised their benefits pretty drastically. Now, that, that, would they acknowledge that? No, they, I've never seen a single person ever acknowledge that. But of course, it's happened. Um, so you got to you got to give something here and there. Bernie Sanders says he just wants to, to eliminate the cap. So just for people who are so they understand when you when your FISA taxes get calculated, um, if you make two hundred thousand dollars a year, only like one hundred thirty thousand of that is actually taxed. And so his, Bernie Sanders' argument is that that really benefits the wealthy because you know if they make a two million dollar paycheck, uh, you know only that first one hundred thirty thousand is is taxed. Okay, I mean I kind of get what he's saying there. At the same time, you know, four hundred thousand dollar paycheck these days for a family of four, it's not you're not exactly enormously wealthy. You're getting taxed a huge amount, especially if you live out where you live in California. Um, it's, you're not exactly uh, hugely wealth uh, wealthy here. Is there? And so I always wonder if they'd be willing to go for sort of a donut. Would that make sense? Would you? Would you raise? Would you keep the cap where it's at, but have kind of a donut there where you start the cap again at say a million or two million? What do economists generally think about that? I, I'm only thinking about it through the lens of compromise and trying to fix the system. Well, raising the cap makes a fundamental change in what this program is. Uh, Roosevelt sold it as you're saving for your retirement. What you put in is what you get out. That was always kind of a wink, wink, nudge, nudge, but that was the American political deal. When you raise the cap, because we're not, if you earn a million bucks, and you pay that much more into Social Security. No one's raising your benefits. You know, uh, not- that's a really good point. So I didn't actually never thought about it's it that way. Yeah, that, that's a very a good counter argument to Bernie. Thank you. Okay. The, 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 the benefits are still going to be capped and the benefits are going to be taxed as they are right. now. Right. So it becomes a pure transfer program. Maybe yes, maybe no. But let's tell the American people. We're, get, we're breaking for Roosevelt's promise, and this is now a pure transfer program. Now, it seems like, oh, you know, rich guys, they can pay another 5%. But you do have to ask how much, you know, let's ask Mr. Sanders, who seems to be actually, uh, Senator Sanders seems to be fairly well off. What is the right tax rate for a very wealthy person? If somebody who earns a million bucks a year earns an additional dollar, how much mm-hmm. of that should he or she be able to keep? Right. And, and then where are we now? Because if you add up federal, state, local, income taxes, estate taxes, property taxes, my calculation for me in California, or I'm not quite at the high tax rate yet, but someone in California at the highest levels, you're already uh, not, you're already getting to keep about 30 cents on the dollar that you earn extra. That's so wild. if we do that, now you earn 25 cents on the dollar. There comes a point, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, the, the famous uh, famous Beatles song, 19 for you and one for me. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> there comes yeah. a point. You're not going to want to earn know. more. And on, on either fairness or efficiency. Uh, right. No, it's, it's unethical, too. I mean, it's, it's pretty unethical to say to people, you have to work, you know, 10 months out of the year just to give it to Uncle Sam. <laughs> that's, that's just on, a- on the margin. Yeah. And I would say also, so it's really puzzling. We want people to save for investment and then we tax the rates of return. And then we realize, you know, that's really a dumb thing. So we have all these special 457 Bs and, and you know, and, and provisions of the tax code to not tax some things, but then you can't take it out. Let's just get rid of taxes on interest, dividends, capital gains, and corporate taxes. Don't tax investments that, you know, don't, we discourage people from saving for retirement. And then we say, why aren't they saving for retirement? And then we put in this Swiss cheese of horrible things with, with, with horrible rules that if you screw up the rules, as I just did, you end up paying an enormous amount of taxes. You know, that's ridiculous. Stop taxing people. But before we say there's a special account that you can use, just stop taxing people when they do save and, and want to save it for retirement. Just be smart about it. All right. That's a good way simple. to end. <laughs> simple. simple about it. John, I appreciate you coming on and um, and talking about this issue with us. It'll give some, uh, something uh, to think about for people as they enter the tax season. So uh, thanks for coming back and uh, enjoy, um, enjoy the snow out there. 
Uh, it's, it's still, uh, always a pleasure. And I must say, you are when people say, "Oh no, nobody in Washington knows what's going on." Uh, you and 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 you, as you show from the shows, you're a wonderful counterexample. Yes, indeed. <laughs> There's plenty of people, really smart people in Washington. So keep up the great work. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, more than people realize, uh, and certainly not the ones that get any credit for it. But uh, they're out there. Um, <laughs> they're out there. I wouldn't. I don't know if there's plenty, but they're out there. <laughs> That's for sure. John, thanks so much for being on. It's always always great to have you and great to talk to you. Pleasure. All right, folks. So now we're on the podcast with Grover Norquist. Um, we, we I just got done talking to John Cochran from from Hoover. He is you know, pro fair tax, you know, pro consumption tax, and um, we talked a lot about tax philosophy, which actually I don't I doubt both of you guys would disagree a whole lot on. Um, maybe there's just disagreement over the specifics of this particular bill. Uh, but I thought it would be interesting to have that dichotomy and 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 talk about the the difference there. Maybe some of other some other uh, issues facing us, like uh, Biden's recent tax proposal. And inevitably, he wants to raise taxes more. I don't think uh, I'm not sure what they uh, what they would would consider ever the the right amount of taxation. Um, so fair tax to start. We'll start there, but I'll only read, let's tell people who you are real quick. So you're president of Americans for Tax Reform. You've been a, a taxpayer advocacy group. You founded in 1985 at President Reagan's request. So I wanted to tell people that you've been at this a very long time. Um, and I think that's that's rather interesting. So um, both uh, you, both an MBA and a BA in economics, both from Harvard. Uh, so you know, you know what you're talking about. And, and you've written against the fair tax Um is it is your is your issue with the the fair tax? Um, and maybe we should quickly go through again for the audience like what exactly it was. But is your issue with it more political or also on economic grounds? Uh, it's it's largely political, and the political problem is so big that that you don't get any further uh, than that. The, the I okay, Americans for Tax Reform was set up to argue for moving towards a single rate tax, a flat tax that taxes consumed income one time, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, a sales tax would do that for you. But what do we have? We have a constitution in the United States that allows an income tax. Does not allow a sales tax, it's not in the constitution. The You can have, a con, under constitution, an income tax. Uh, you can make an income tax, single rate. Uh, there are 12 states, actually 20 states, have a single rate income tax. Eight of them, like Texas, it's zero. Zero is the best number for flat rate income taxes. Uh, but other states, 12 other states have three, four, five uh, percent, but they're single rate. The reason you want a single rate is because it's very difficult to increase. You have to look at everybody in the state and say, I've got this really good idea and you're all paying for it. In which case they go, we're all listening. And mm -hmm. single rate taxes in Illinois are under 5%, okay? Mm -hmm. Graduated income taxes in California, 13 and a half, New York, 10, Minnesota, 10, Illinois, flat tax, single rate tax, less than five. And it's very easy to take a flat tax down because you go, we're going from five to four. Everybody goes from five to four. I mean, millionaires and poor people and middle income, everyone goes from five to four. Well, that's fair. Okay. And then you can take it down towards zero as 10 states are now doing phasing their income tax down towards zero to catch up with you guys in Texas. So you got to start cutting some other taxes. So yeah. you want to go to a single rate tax, not because it's fair. Taxation is taking money from people who earned it and giving it to people who perhaps didn't earn it. That's not fair. Okay. That's taxation. That's government. That's a government monopoly. But it is understandable mm -hmm. what a flat tax is. You know that the guy next to you makes twice as much as paying twice as much in taxes. Got it. I understand what's going on here single rate tax. Uh, you don't want to, and you want to tax consum consumed income, consumption. You mm -hmm. don't, what, right now, the federal government, they tax you when you earn a dollar. Uh, if you just waste it, then they don't tax you again. But if you invest it in the bank, they tax the interest. If you invest it in a 401k or an IRA, they tax the uh, capital gains. If you invest it in a company, they tax the, 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 the corporate income there. If you're stupid enough to die, they take maybe half. OK, so they keep coming back and biting the same apple until you're left with a little core at the end. And that's your life savings you get to retire on. So the, what you want to do is that. Now, some people say, why don't we take the present income tax and eliminate it? Oh, really? 
Um, how? <laughs> well, we're going to get two things. We're going to get the House and the Senate and the president all to agree to that. When? Uh, and if you did, and we're going to replace it with something, if you don't abolish the 16th Amendment, which allows an income tax, anytime the Democrats win the House, the Senate, and the presidency, right back in with the income tax. And you got nothing. You have an income tax and the fair tax, the sales tax, or the value added tax, with a consumption tax added, which isn't in the Constitution, by the way, added to the present income tax. So you have two tapeworms. Why would you risk having two tapeworms when you could take the present tapeworm and make it smaller? If you simply you want you want to make the income tax the economic equivalent of the sales tax, exempt. Um, Increase when you reinvest, uh, allow people to save without having uh, zero capital gains, zero tax on on uh, income that you have already earned once, and you put it into a 401k or an IRA. That's not just for education or just for retirement. It's for anything you want it to be. Bush had this. George W. Bush had this as as an idea, um, the universal savings account. So all you take it in, and then everything you save isn't taxed. Yeah, and if you take it out and buy a yacht, then you would pay taxes on it. So mm -hmm. you can get to the economics of a sales tax simply by reducing and simplifying the income tax. And you haven't risked creating a second one. But the other reason, the dement reason, the Nancy Mace reason, that you can never, ever, ever, ever move from an income tax to a sales tax is that you're talking about you know 30 percent or more on the on the sales tax to get rid of the income tax the uh, death tax the social security tax all of which are income taxes mm -hmm. on income and because you have to have an irs if you have any of those things so mm -hmm. you move it over to a sales tax if you're 20 years old it doesn't matter too much to you if you pay your taxes when you earn a dollar or when you spend the dollar same thing but let's say you're oh, 65 and you spent your entire life paying the income tax. Have we got a deal for you? It's called the fair tax. We're going to get rid of the income tax. Yes, I know. I'm not working anymore. Now I'm now I'm retired. I'm going to spend my life savings. Aha! And your life savings is now 30% less than it used to be because everything you buy with your life savings will have a 30% sales tax on it. Are you happy? Or you, do you want to disembowel the person who thought this up? Okay. And 65-year-olds vote. And 20-year-olds sometimes remember to vote. This is what almost beat Congressman De uh, Senator DeMint when he was running for Senate. He was 11 points ahead. His opponent said, you know, DeMint has endorsed the, sale, the fair tax. And they ran a little ad, fair tax is 20. They thought it was a 26% tax, more like 30%, really. Um, sales tax on top of all the other problems in life. And he went to dead even. He almost lost that Senate race in South Carolina. You shouldn't lose... Oh. Senate races to liberals in South Carolina. Nancy Mace almost had her head taken off. Same reason. This is almost, this is, this has cost people elections. This has taken people who weren't, weren't close, shouldn't have been close, and almost destroyed them. Um, and that's why there used to be 75 Republicans on it. And they're now about 25, because people realize it's political death. Well, it's and, interesting. It's interesting because I don't, I don't really hear any fundamental economic disagreements uh, between you and John. Um, you guys have the same philosophy on on what makes for a more efficient tax system. Uh, like if you if you were creating the country from scratch right now, what would the tax system looks like? It does seem like you agreed it would be it would be a consumption tax oriented. Uh, you know that would be in the constitution. That would be the the best way, the most economic economically efficient way, the best way for 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 growth, the best uh, best way for fairness, all of it. Yeah. Um, it's just, but your argument is you've got to look at this through the lens of political reality and it's just it's 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 so unfeasible to the point that it might actually backfire drastically it would backfire drastically every european country when they brought the value added tax in which is basically if you're gonna have a 30% sales tax the size of the irs is going to have to make the stasi look small because you nobody pays a 30% sales tax on anything in this country you go down a block from Walmart and buy it out the back of a truck. 
at a 30 yeah. percent sales so, tax so so let's talk then about what the middle ground is i mean so the, the fair tax bill is is kind of like the the purest version of of that philosophy right no 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 a, Not- a an income tax that exempts savings is the purest version of it an income tax that exempts savings. Well, that was yeah. kind of, that seems to me like kind of a middle ground. Okay, but let's let you, you mentioned that briefly. Maybe let's unpack that a little bit. But also, but also, you know, what if what if you had to negotiate with 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 Buddy Carter's bill to make it a, a better bill and like and 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 make sure seniors weren't weren't screwed out of it um, to make sure that the the lower income folks who you know aren't really paying effective tax rates anyway, but now would have a, a thirty percent increase in their uh, in okay. costs. You know, and, and it does it does address those with the UBI, which you've criticized as well. But I'm not even I'm not sure it does address the the issue with seniors. How would you address no. it if you wanted to make no. that a, a better deal for them? Would you no. just would you just increase Social Security benefits by thirty <laughs> percent? Okay, why would you even worry about how to do something that can be simplified by reducing the cost of the income tax? If the votes are there to do something as dramatic, but by the way. If you abolish the income tax and put this non-constitutional sales tax in Mm -hmm. um, and don't abolish the 16th Amendment, which requires two thirds of both houses. Yeah, there's a lot of ifs there. Three quarters. No, no, if there is never in the history of America going to be two thirds of the the House and the Senate willing and three quarters of the states willing to get rid of the personal income tax. The left Mm -hmm. is never going to shrink that small yeah and if they were that small why would you risk a new tax just that means years and years before you could ever get the other you could have a universal savings account just keep making the ira the 401k bigger and bigger and bigger and anytime you make money you put it in there you don't pay double taxes on savings and investment when you pull it out and you spend it then you you recognize it as income uh and you could save a lot more and companies could grow a lot faster and you would have abolished the problem that the fair tax people say they're working on, which is the double and triple taxation. The other thing they like to say is, oh, we'll get rid of the IRS. But what they have to remember is the size of the police force to police half of the cigarettes sold in New York don't pay New York cigarette taxes. They're smuggled because the sales tax, the tobacco tax is high. Mm -hmm. That would be everything in a 30% sales tax future. Mm. Not just cigarettes. The Full Employment for Smugglers Act. That's it. Oh, that's that's also an interesting counterpoint that I don't think uh, I, I I've heard anyone say before. So so again, the, the the middle ground, the proper way to kind of get the best of both worlds with within the view of political reality, mm-hmm. um, like you said, simply increase those tax exempt savings accounts, allow people to, because it is it's frustrating. You and John are going to agree on this, right? You shouldn't be taxing investments. You should want people to do that. You really shouldn't even be taxing income if you can get away with it. Yeah. Um, and and then that 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 solves for for that issue. Um, is there a bill that does that? Are you, are you thinking of a specific proposal or do we need to go write it? Do we need to talk to Jason Smith, chairman of the Ways and Means Committee and get this going? No, no, no. You should take this and run with it. The guys at Ways and Means will give you, we have 12 other thoughts already. What they haven't done is the clean one, which is just make it, Universal savings account. and and the fact that the Bush administration was prepared to put that forward and then they forgot to win the election in 2006. Um, so they lost Congress. Uh, but this was the plan. This is what they wanted to do. It's what they should have done instead of invading Iraq. Anyway, they did. There are a number of things that they might have focused on. This would have been the most important thing that the Bush people could have done to change the world. And they spent their political capital on other things. Um, but this would make the United States head and shoulders above the rest of the world in terms of a pro-growth tax policy. Can we explain to people exactly what it means? So, so, so okay, so you, you, everyone would have a universal savings account. You'd have an account. You, if you could, you could choose to put a portion of your paycheck in there, and then that paycheck, that portion would no longer be taxed at whatever rate that you're taxed at. And then what can you do with that money, and when can you take okay. it out? Well, we have educational savings accounts. We have health savings accounts. We have retirement savings accounts. You got a bunch of different accounts, okay? This would simply say, it's a universal savings account. If you're not going to spend it and you want to save it for your kid's education, for a vacation later, for your retirement, for your health care, whatever you want to start a small business. If you're saving it, you put it into that account. That doesn't pay 
uh, taxes and it accumulates over time, um, interest and, 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 and growth, you can put it in the stock market or whatever. And then when you take it out and spend it, then you would pay taxes on it at the end of the day, but only when you consume it, not as it grows. So tax savings would not be taxed, only consumption would be taxed. And you wouldn't have to put it in different, this is what I save for education and this is what I save for retirement. Well, what if I want to start a small business? Can I take my retirement? No, you can't. We're going to let you decide what you do with your life savings and how to spend them and what goes for healthcare and what goes for different things. And then you've not double taxed savings and investment. Okay, so that's interesting. So you say so you have $100,000 that you've put in it, um, it's tax free. Uh, you can put you you can invest that entire hundred thousand and say uh, in like a private equity or stocks mutual fund yeah like let let it grow it's not taxed then uh, but but it is but if you want to but then you can use it for your kids education at that point it is taxed that would be how but it works when you when you take it out and spend it you would, then it would be recognized as income so you'd pay taxes okay. on that but the point is it's much bigger mm-hmm. than it's bigger than it know. otherwise would be and not and that's okay. Uh, that and that solves for a lot of the issues that you're talking about. Um, we only have every for a couple more minutes. Okay, how uh, Biden's proposal recently was basically just <laughs> we could go through the list of things, but it was it was pretty obscene. A lot of tax increases. Um, how bad would that be for the economy at, at, at this point in time? And what do what do you make of it? And, and what do you make of his even political philosophy for doing that? I mean, you just got to wonder at some point uh, why they think this is even good for them politically. Well, they imagine that they're going to raise all this tax, this tax money, $5 trillion over a decade. Um, but they say it's going to come from rich people and corporations. And most of the establishment media goes, OK, that means not you. Right. Um, in point of fact, the corporate income tax between 50 and 70 percent of the corporate income tax is paid by workers and lower wages. Because what do companies do with money when they, they hire people? And if you take a million dollars away, they're going to hire fewer people or pay them less. So. All corporate income taxes do is hide who actually pays it. Workers pay it in lower wages, consumers pay it in higher prices, uh, and your 401k and your IRA is reduced as well. So it comes out of your pockets. There, there's no Mr. General Motors who's paying yeah, taxes. Right, right. This is, yeah, it's funny. You and John said the exact same thing. Again, you guys, actually, I tried to make this like a disagreement episode. Yeah. You guys actually agree completely. He just, he just, He's an economy he's purely on the economic side, so that's all he thinks about. You're, you're thinking it through through a political lens. It's just funny. You made the same argument about corporate tax rates, and you're absolutely right. It makes a lot of sense. But so, but according to CBS and the Democrats, corporations pay it and you don't, and rich people pay it and you don't. Okay, so they say that. Then they turn around. Why is he doing this? So he can turn around and promise all the spending constituencies, all the special interests that make up and fund the modern Democratic Party from labor unions to trial lawyers to big city political machines to people who get welfare to people who manage the lives of people on welfare and make sure they don't get jobs and become Republicans. That whole collection, they all need (laughs) cash. They're very expensive. Okay, And so he needs to promise them, I promise I'm going to steal this money and give it to you and I'm going to take it from three people. And CBS will go, okay, makes sense to me. But normal people look at that and realize this is coming out of our pockets, not Mr. General Motors' pockets. And it's, what are they doing? They're taking the capital gains tax back to Jimmy Carter levels. Jimmy Carter, 1978, the economy was falling apart. We had not only inflation and recession at the same time, because among other things, high capital gains taxes and Republicans and Democrats joined together. Democrats held the House and the Senate in 1978, and they cut it in half, the capital gains tax in half. The modern Democratic Party in 78 said that level of capital gains is toxic. We need to get rid of it. And Biden wants to go back to it. On the corporate income tax, we got a bipartisan agreement in 1986. My group was founded to help make that happen, to take the corporate rate down from 50 to about 34, 33, uh, 34, 34%, right? Boom, down. And um, that was bipartisan. We had Democrats and Republicans. We had a bunch of Democrat senators all agreed this was a good idea. What does Biden wants to do? Take the corporate rate back up higher than China's, higher than China. We're going to compete with higher taxes than China, more regulations than China, higher energy costs than China. We're going to compete on low wages. Why would you want to compete on low wages? I want to compete with low energy costs, low regulatory burden, low taxes, not low wages. I want high, high wages and you keep the other stuff down. 
But Biden is shifting it over so that we'll be competing on low wages because the taxes are higher than China's on the corporate side. So each of these things that he does, he takes the personal income tax up higher than anything going back into the 80s. Rates that we recognized needed to come down because they were too high. We, the Democrats agreed to take the top rate to 28. Now this guy wants to take it up over 40. If you live in a blue state, you'll be paying more than 50% of your income. Maybe that's the only good thing about this. Maybe the blue state guys would wake they'll, up. Actually. They'll, they'll, they'll finally realize it. I don't know. I mean, I think that's already true. And in, in many of these in New York and California, I think it's already true that they pay less. Well, it's not true for the middle class. It's, it's true for your, your upper wage earners. Um, well, one thing I was thinking about as we were talking about this, now kind of going back to this, uh, the, the question, the philosophy of a consumption tax is when I look at yeah. Texas, that's kind of what we have. I mean, we don't we don't have an income tax, and we get most of our revenue, if not all of it, from sales tax and property taxes. Um, but I guess you're you're saying like, yeah, that is ideally how you do it. It's just not it is not feasible at the federal level for all the reasons you've stated. Yeah, the the rates much too high to to be there. And because we already have, now you have in your constitution in Texas, never, never, never an income tax. Mm -hmm. We don't have that at the federal level. Yeah. <laughs> we have in the federal level, you may have a con, you may have one if you want. It's right here. It's right here. All you got to do is pick it up and it's back. Mm -hmm. And since it would never be undone, look, if somebody came to me and said, we have the votes to do that, you might even consider thinking about it, but they don't. Yeah, and yeah. there's been no effort to get the votes for that. And you just look at the modern structure of the 50 states. Find me the 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 the, the three quarters of the states that would ban. But do, the but do you think there's at least some benefit in in having these discussions? Because a, a largely a, a, this is largely about economic education. People don't understand taxation. Don't understand what makes more sense. They, but, uh, Democrats, of course, when they're when they're talking about the fair tax, they make it seem like you're just getting a thirty percent increase, and that there's you know <laughs> there's there's not even any other additional benefits to it. People just don't know these things and have not been have not been. Uh, taught they're not been educated by by our media so is there at least some benefit into at least having those discussions the benefit is that of the 75 republicans who at one point co-sponsored this bill we're now down to about 25 or fewer that are co-sponsoring now those 50 need an exit ramp and that's the exit ramp i just wanted to start a conversation about the importance of not double taxing savings and investment because mm -hmm. getting into the details of this bill and, and all the challenges with it. And it, 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 it when you create a new tax, it, 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 New Jersey had only property taxes, but they were way too high. So in 1965, they said, let's have a sales tax to get the property taxes lower. So they had two, they had sales tax and the property tax. And by 1977, to property taxes and sales taxes are so high, they decided to add the income tax in order to keep the other things low. So now New Jersey has a very high income tax, a sales tax and very high property taxes. It's got three tapeworms instead of one. And the theory that a second and third tapeworm would make the first tapeworm get smaller doesn't work with taxes or tapeworms. So the dangers of new taxes of that, okay, look what the left wants in America is a value added tax and an income tax. Mm -hmm. When you come in and say, how about sales tax? Sales tax, you cannot collect a sales tax at 30%. You could collect a VAT at 30% because the, the way it's policed between companies, they, mm -hmm. they have 25% VATs in Europe and they make that stick because everybody reports on each other. Everybody works mm -hmm. for the IRS in, in business telling who has and hasn't taken that tax, but they have both income tax, wage taxes, and uh, sales tax, value added tax. Never, never, never add a new tax. They all grow like tapeworms. Take the ones we have and shave them down. That's the conversation. Why not have a universal IRA, universal yeah. you know, USA, account, universal yeah. savings account? Sure. That is a wonderful economic, but the other gets so tangled up in the politics of it that we'll lose more congressional seats. And I'm not in favor of tax increases that cost, or tax ideas that cost Republicans House and Senate seats. That's a very bad thing to have. Ta taxes are tapeworms. That's what we'll end, end with. They is. <laughs> I'm going to make a t-shirt. Taxes are tapeworms. I like it. Grover, I know you got to go. And uh, thanks for spending some time with me and, uh, and going through this. I really appreciate it. Take care, Congressman. Thank you very much. Thank you All for right. your service. Thank you. Bye.